What's going on, y'all? Let's talk about what happened in the NBA last week. So if y'all were curious, this is kind of how I track things throughout the week. Basically, if a player has a good game, I just plot it on this sheet here. And these numbers correspond to how many points they had in this game. So when you go over and actually look at like these points per game and everything, that's not actually how many points per game they averaged during the week. Dante DiVincenzo did not average 40, but in terms of like good games they did. And that's kind of why I used this games tracker here as well to be like, okay, how actually like prevalent was this throughout the week? But anyway, let's talk about what happened in the NBA last week. One of the first moments I want to talk about this week was this awesome game between the Spurs and the Knicks. Ooh, what a clank by Wemby or whatever. But hey, Wemby, Wemby had a phenomenal game this game. For those of you that weren't paying attention, he had like a 40-20 game essentially as a rookie. Any, any of you that are doubting Wemby at this point, which I don't think those people probably exist, but dude's the real deal, man. And this game, this game was just electric between him and Brunson. Brunson had like 60 points in this game or something just stupid like that. And man, it, it was intense. The game ended up going into OT because I think it's Miles McBride that takes the last shot here. Yeah, he doesn't quite get it to fall. No, but it goes to OT. And in essence, the Spurs go and take care of business at home, which is awesome. The Spurs are starting to put together like some like clutch wins at the end of the season, which that's that's good growth at the end of the day. We're seeing this team really start to just put everything together it's not like they're like a good team yet but this little young core that struggled so much at the beginning of the year they're all starting to kind of find their place together so those of you that have been saying like oh they gotta go get trey young they gotta go do all this and everything like just calm down y'all let development happen i promise you i've been on enough staffs about where we have young teams and everything just just wait just be patient this team's gonna be good all right, next topic of the week. The Rockets just continue to win basketball games. They ended up actually losing to Dallas last night. But in essence, uh, Jalen Green has just continued to keep on hooping. And Amin Thompson has just already blossomed into like a low-key star in the NBA. One of the things I notice about Jalen Green is he's actually kind of playing like within himself at this point. He used to just kind of like catch the ball, just attack. His head was just down. He's not really looking for anything in particular. And I've noticed over the past couple weeks, he's been truly trying to get to his spots on the court, which is good. And like he has his isolation moments still where he just is like using his like really athletic ability and his good handle to get by people. And that's awesome. Like he's always been incredibly skilled. My criticism has always been I just don't think he's a very cerebral basketball player, but he's really starting to put it together and hey let's let's hope Jalen Green continues it like I hope he proves me wrong and really becomes the talent that he can be and then as far as like Amon Thompson goes like you, you guys know I'm a huge fan of the Thompson twins as I've as I watched both of them coming into the season, I was like, wow, these these two are incredible. Like, obviously, 11 out of 10 athletes, great skilled players and everything, but it's their, like, basketball intelligence that's so crazy. And now I'm in Thompson with, with Sengun being down for them. They, they've slid him in to kind of play, like, the small forward role, like Jabari Smith moved over to the five, and they've got uh, Dylan Brooks playing the four. And I'm in one has been scoring, like, it's something like 18, like eight and something else or something, right? And he, he's been going crazy. Amon Thompson's been going absolutely nuts. But like not only from scoring, his defense is absolutely elite right now. Like he looks like an all defensive player and probably is playing at that level right now. So like we, we can talk about his like lack of jump shooting and everything. He's, he's hit like one three recently or something. And that's probably about it. But let's not Ben Simmons this thing. Let's admire the fact that this guy's a phenomenal passer, ball handle an elite finisher, an elite athlete, and a, just a crazy good defender. This guy literally does everything but shoot well right now. And so if he develops a shot, he's an NBA All-Star already. That's how good this guy is. And it's been awesome to see them like really put it together with this new young group that they're going with. Then speaking of teams that have been winning a lot and a team that just beat the Houston Rockets, like I said, the Dallas Mavericks have been absolutely on fire as of late. I think I wrote a note here. Yeah, uh, Luka went 31-10-10 and in March, and they went like 11-3. and So when they made all those trades at the deadline, we said that Dallas won the deadline. Then they went on a nice little win streak. Then they kind of started to lose again. Now they're really, really hot again, and they're starting to look like title contenders. If we take a look at them throughout those like last 14 games, obviously Luka doing his thing, right? But also he's been like really delegating to Kyrie Irving at the end of games to close things out, which is probably the ideal way to go about things. 
when you think about it, Kyrie Irving's just always proven to be an elite player in those times. Looking at some of the other numbers we see from Dallas throughout this month, the other thing that obviously sticks out is Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively have been phenomenal. Their field goal percentage is crazy, 82%, 73%. Basically, you're getting 48 minutes of just straight rim running now on Dallas. And that's what we talked about when we said that they got Daniel Gafford. That was a big thing for them. Now they always have that player that Luka and Kyrie have just both always excelled with. So you have constant rim protection, rebounding, and rim running. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, PJ Washington's kind of been that fourth score. He's playing off the dribble a lot more, which is kind of cool too. What I want to pay attention to though, is they're not even like shooting that crazy from three in this time and they're still getting dubs. So like shout out, shout out Dallas for this one, except Derek or not Derek Lively, Derek Jones Jr. Been, he's been shooting it. Also, a little side note here, Maxi Kleba has been getting less minutes, and that's probably something that needed to happen in favor of the other bigs. So, yeah, shout out Dallas, man. They're cooking right now. All right, y'all, let's talk about this one now. Draymond Green had an interesting week, to say the least. Uh, first thing, he gets kicked out like four minutes into a basketball game here. So, Draymond, he's out here. He's doing his thing, right? Going going here. What's going on? What's going to happen? Draymond Green's talking already. And yeah, needless to say, it, it doesn't go well for Draymond Green. He gets he gets ejected here because he's yelling at someone way too early. It's four minutes into the game and Draymond, Draymond gets tossed. And th these are the moments where we where we start to wonder like what's going on with Draymond Green, right? This This is happening more and more frequently. And I've always been a proponent of like, Hey, you know, you, you need guys like this on your team. You just do like it's going to it's going to blow up in your face every once in a while. But I feel like we're kind of crossing that threshold now because it happened again this week. Because later in the week, we had this situation where Draymond, he goes a little bit off balance. He almost kicks Grant in the groin here. And Grant Williams looks like he's trying to get in his head probably a little bit. And Draymond's like, okay, I got to walk away from this one. But it looked like he was like on the cusp of maybe like blowing a fuse again. And that's that's where you start to get worried. Like Draymond did have a really good game last night. He had like 21 points or something like that. But like with, with where the Warriors are at this year, they can't afford to be having situations like this happen. Like they need him in the game. And, you know, at what point is Draymond just doing too much right where is he just doing too much and I, I think we're starting to hit that line a little bit and I'm going to be very curious to see what the Warriors offseason looks like because you'd hate to see this three break up or whatever but Steph can still win it man he can still win it so what, what do you do to supply him with the right talent Alrighty, y'all. Last two things to talk about. The first thing, Raptors keep losing. They're they're one in thirteen, and maybe one in fourteen this month now at the time of recording this. But yeah, the Raptors have not been good recently. Since they made all these trades and everything, nothing's really seemed to click together. But if you're a Raptors fan, this has greatly increased your chances of getting a higher pick in the draft, which maybe they really had to pick a direction, and this is probably the right direction to go. What's maybe a little concerning is the fact that like. Their roster doesn't suggest that they should be this bad. They have an all-star caliber player. They've got plenty of good role players on the team. So, like, what's going on with this? I know there's been a lot of experimentation with the roster and everything, but I don't know. It's just kind of a concerning thing. But if you're a Raptors fan, let me know if you're, I guess, happy or sad about this. And what's the direction you're hoping with going? And do you guys finally admit now that you guys didn't need to trade that first-round pick to go get Kelly Olynyk? It doesn't make sense to me still. <laughs> Last thing, physical play in the NBA. For those of you that have actually been watching has been like greatly increased and it's been way better to watch. The games have been so much more fun to watch. And the reason like I'm noting this is not just like, oh, I'm making an observation. The NBA also came out and said like, hey, after the All-Star break, we told the refs like, hey, let's like, we really need to cut a lot of this bullshit out. Like let these dudes play. Like there's a lot of times now where I see dudes like Shea or like Curry or something trying to like really jump into people and call and get something called and it's not happening. So if you're a free throw reliant player like those guys, like it's, it was a tough couple weeks for you. Not that Shea hasn't still been cooking everybody, but at least in terms of their overall efficiency, they're not getting to the free throw line nearly as much. And I love it. Like, please keep this up. Like we want to see physical play. We want to see dudes get into scraps and things like that. We want competitive basketball in that way. So yeah, really exciting stuff. And that's what happened this last week in basketball, y'all. Let me know what you think of kind of this format and everything and taking a look at things. Normally I do kind of like a three players I really like to watch this week, but we kind of discussed all of them a little bit between Jalen Brunson, Wen Banyama, and Jalen Green. So I'm just going to assume you guys figured that that's who I was talking about. But anyway, you guys let me know what you like and everything, what you like in this format, what you don't like. And yeah, we will see you guys next Monday for another recap. Thanks so much, y'all.